Welcome again. Yes, uh, to answer a few questions and queries, I did fall and break my arm. And uh, please God, it's on the mend. During the week, um, several of us here in the Columban House had a chance to attend a webinar given by a, a Nigerian priest who now teaches in Santa Clara University and is part of the Synod in Rome on the new uh, letter that the Pope put out on promoting theology. It was a great talk and he's a wonderful speaker. But the point that I want to share today is one of the words that he used occasionally during his talk was inclusion. It's a word that struck in my mind because Thanks to an Jose Antonio Pagola, that is considered one of the four characteristics or pillars of the kingdom, the reign of God. The other ones are compassion, healing, forgiveness, and inclusion. And where any one of those are, the kingdom of God is. But why I want to focus on inclusion is because we've had a an abundance of feasts recently. We've had the Ascension, we've had Pentecost, we've had the Holy Trinity, and this Sunday we're going to have Corpus Christi. And I want to make the connection between Jesus' message, his practice, the Kingdom of God, and the presence of the Eucharist communion amongst us. Because for my, in my youth, many, many years ago, communion was surrounded by a barrage of laws and regulations and requirements. And it was anything but inclusive. Even in the little local church, Reedsdale, where we used to go every Sunday, um, one Sunday was 8 o'clock and the next Sunday was 10. And before the 8 o'clock Mass, the priest would hear confessions. And we'd all go to confession and we'd all go to communion. But the next Sunday, because he was coming from previous masses, there was no confession. And so we didn't go to communion. It seems a little different from both the practice and the message of Jesus. I look at so many of his miracles, you know, and they're all geared towards inclusion or re-inclusion. He cures the lepers so they can return to their family and their community. He cures the man with the withered hand and the woman with the curved spine so they can return to their daily living, their daily work, their daily life. He cures the woman with a hemorrhage. It's all so people can be reincorporated into, included in the life of their family, their community, their work, whatever it be. But even more especially, I think, you can look at Jesus' table ministry. I like to call it ministry because he was so often, according to the Gospels, at table and sharing a meal. So I don't see any time when Jesus didn't include people in sharing table. He shared it with publicly recognized sinners. He shared it with tax collectors and prostitutes. He also shared table frequently with those who hated him and planned to kill him, some of the Pharisees. And he also shared table with common folk, like the fishermen of Galilee. So Jesus never put up barriers or obstacles to sharing table with him. And then we look at the Last Supper. He washes the feet of everyone at the Last Supper. And he says to everyone at the Last Supper, eat and drink. Take and share and eat. Take and share and drink. This is my body, this is my blood. I am here for you as nourishment and as protection. Recalling the tradition of the Passover meal. 
in Egypt at the first Passover, the lamb was slain, was cooked, prepared, and it was nourishment for the journey, and it was protection from the plague. And Jesus is following that tradition. He is now the lamb offering himself as nourishment and protection. And for those who most need it, not for some few, but for everyone, especially those who most need it. And that again recalls another aspect of Jesus' life when he never put requirements on anybody to come to him. The woman with the hemorrhage snuck up behind and touched his cloak. The lepers cried out, have mercy on us. And Jesus responded, and it was the contact with him that healed, cleansed, and cured them. And a classic example to me is a tax collector, a very, very wealthy tax collector, in other words, very familiar with breaking it off. And it was the meeting with Jesus that healed him of that. And so I just want to finish with the, the statement that the Pope um, gave in his first encyclical, uh, The Joy of the Gospel. He says, the Eucharist is not a reward for a life well lived, but the promise of a better life. And so when we come to Corpus Christi, please remember that Jesus is there offering us nourishment and protection for everyone, but especially those who most need it. Okay? Have a great week. Don't forget our YouTube channel. And uh, we'll see you next week. God bless. Thank you.